Hey guys, and welcome back to the final part of Shine On You Crazy Kai Ked, which is a f small series about getting you started building a small thing and then blinking it with code, which, uh, you know, has has some uh, has some implications, right? Obviously, we've we've done uh, Getting to Blinky 4.0, which is another thing on contextualelectronics.com. You can go and do that as well. That is not a code-based one. That's just building a thing with a 555 timer, adding a battery, getting it to blink. This is a shorter, smaller version, for people, especially for people that are used to re Raspberry Pi, and uh, so the last three videos, the first one we designed the board, second one we sourced the parts, third one we built the board, and now we're ready to program the board. So let's go take a look over at the board uh, and see what we got going on here. So this thing is, uh, it's turned way down just to show that it is plugged in, or sorry, to show that there's blinking happening, and uh, so it's not usually this dark. You see that the power is on the left side there. Uh, let's actually unplug this thing and uh, take a look at what happens when it's uh, when we turn it on and and get it all booted up, right? So we're actually watching watching the screen here. The HDMI is plugged in. If you also see, there's an Ethernet cable. There's, this is the HDMI. This is the power cable. And then over here is a uh, a small wireless uh, keyboard and mouse. And then obviously we have our board here, which is not plugged in yet. All right, now that it's powering up, as once it's done, rather, we'll uh, we'll go and actually uh, plug in this board. Shouldn't take too long. All right, so we're booted now. So now let's just go and plug this thing in. Now, if you remember, on the left side here, we have, uh, I'm sorry, we have two LEDs, two resistors, and then the connector. The left side resistor, the left side LED is uh, just when the power, so it's just connected to pin one, which is uh, power. So we're gonna just plug this in. Remember, we're gonna be on the left 10 pins of the Raspberry Pi header. So let's go and plug that in. And we see it does light up there. Now, what you also see, you may see on your board, I don't know if you can see it well here, that GPIO2 is actually lit up a little bit as well. And that's because uh, G the pin there is actually not initialized to zero, it's actually tri-stated. So there's a little bit of leakage current coming down through the LED, through the resistor, and then into ground, right? So it's actually, it's tri-stated, it's, it's so sorry, it's sourcing a little bit of current up and over and through the LED there. So if you see that, don't worry about it. That will actually go, you can kind of see it there. Uh, that will go away once we initialize this thing. And so let's go and actually do that. Let's go back to our uh, our view here. So what we have is we have a, uh, a Raspbian, this is a Raspbian distribution. So we can turn on our, uh, well, we've got our terminal here. We've got a little bit bigger than normal. What we're also gonna look at is uh, this, thing from Adafruit. So Adafruit is great about getting you set up with Raspberry Pi. This is actually, so they've they've got things where you can go and load up Raspbian onto the SD card, or the mini SD card, depending which version of Raspberry Pi you have. So definitely go and follow along with that. Uh, at this point though, what we're showing is the uh, GPIO. And what we need to do is go and uh, get updates. But really what we need to do, so you can go and follow this code, or you can input, input this code rather, and get updates. I'm not gonna do that because it takes a little bit of time. But then also we need to configure GPIO, and I will show this. So if we go over here, I'm going to go and uh, type in the commands that they show. So sudo apt-get install python dev. Should have this installed already. This is actually going out over the Ethernet cable there. Move that over a little bit. So you can see that that's already the newest version. sudo apt-get install python dash rpi.gpio, and this is the main thing we're gonna be using here. This is actually the library that allows us to access down to the low level GPIO stuff. So that looks good. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is actually start up Python, and I'm gonna actually borrow code from this project. Again, I will link all this stuff in, but this is another project that they do, basically showing you how to use an email server. But from here, you wanna be able to turn on LEDs, and so that's an easy way to show it here. So you can see this is actually using Gmail, importing the IMAP client, all that stuff. We're not gonna do any of that stuff, we're just gonna borrow some of the code here. Specifically here, we're gonna set the mode, we're gonna set up the pin, and then we're gonna turn on and off the LEDs. All right, so let's go and do that. So I'm gonna do sudo python, that gets you in there. And this is just a REPL, it's called, a Python REPL. Uh, I forget what that stands for. Um, <laughs> so let's go and follow along. So gpio.set mode and then gpio.bcm. Oopsies. 
I missed one. What did I? Oh, I missed one. Yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, the all important thing in Python is you need to actually import that. <laughs> you need to import the library first. And so, oh, you forgot to do that. Sorry. Yep. All right. So, uh, can I move this up a little bit, though? There we go. Now you can see it all. Uh, so, first things first import rpy gpio as gpio. So now we're going to be able to just call gpio dot whatever, right? So from here, now we want to do gpio dot set mode gpio dot bcm. Can't say I know what that means, but I'm just kind of following along here. Uh, and, and it should be noted that, you know, like, so if you are doing projects, you know, there's going to be a balance, uh, especially if you're new to Raspberry Pi, it's going to be a balance of kind of borrowing code, figuring things out as you go along. Uh, especially if you're new to coding and hardware, uh, that's going to be kind of hard. I kind of assumed that people were kind of coming from the Raspberry Pi world, but if that's not the case, like I said, there's a lot of great Adafruit tutorials getting you started on that side of things. I'm here mostly for the hardware. So, uh, yes, hopefully that part has been going well. All right, so we've set the mode. Now we need to actually set up the pin. So gpio.setup. And then the pin number is gpio2, like we labeled on that board. I'm going to say gpio.out. Now this warning here, this says the channel is already in use. That warning is because... Uh, on my board, at least, I have a default to set it to an I squared C pin, which it also doubles as. So uh, don't worry about that here, but it is a warning, not an error. Um, so we're going to be okay. But just so you know, uh, that's why that error is thrown. You might see it if you've set it up like that as well. All right, so let's go and set up. So now we're going to say gpio.output. I'm going to say the pin number. And then I'm going to say true or false. So let's go false first. Now, what we should see is that we set it to false, and it's, again, kind of hard to see, but that set it low, or set it high, rather, and so now that uh, there's no current flowing, sorry, it set it low, sorry about that, so it set it low, so now there's, there's no current at the top of that LED, so there's nothing, there's not even that trickle current that was sliding it up a little bit. So, let's go and now hit up to, to do it to pull up the last line or change that to true. Bingo. We go false, true, false, true. Haha. -ha. So we have now successfully blinked an LED uh, using Shine On You Crazy Kai Cat. So obviously the left side is still lit up and the right side is uh, well that's the one that's controllable. Now in the future uh, what I hope to do is to take this simple format and actually implement I squared C and simple uh, relay switches and other small projects here. Um, this is kind of the stuff that we do in contextual electronics. The, the Raspberry Pi piece is actually new for us. We don't usually use Raspberry Pi. We use things like Teensies and Arduinos and really uh, we actually have a custom board that we've built in the past for microcontrollers. So a wide range of things but there's no reason we shouldn't use Raspberry Pi and uh, there's a large community out there so I wanted to help that community build some small pieces of hardware. Hopefully that has for you. Uh, if you have any questions about this one, uh, you can go over in the forum. There's a uh, forum post associated with all four posts, and also there's uh, uh, pages on contextual electronics that are associated with this video as well. I'll try and link all this stuff together so it's easy to navigate. If you're interested in the course, the course is meant for people that are looking to not just use KiCad, right? KiCad is a big focus because it's an open source program that we use, but also just learning electronics, right? So a lot of the things we've done here, right? So picking out components, uh, shopping for components, looking at architectures, looking at uh, the theory behind it, right? That's a big piece of pairing theory and practical, which I hope you can kind of see we did a little bit of. I know that we didn't delve too deep in LEDs, but we do in the course. Uh, so if there's other things you're interested in, we always take feedback. Uh, and we've gone through a lot of things like motor drivers and power uh, switching power supplies and optics and op amps and just a whole range of everything you're going to touch in electronics we try and, and cover uh, in the course. It's an ongoing program. You can sign up at any time. And basically, there's small projects you can go and complete uh, on your time. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Hopefully you enjoyed this series. If you did, please, you know, like or thumbs up or whatever, whatever method uh, or share it just with your friends. Share it around. That's also great as well. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, we do have forum posts and we have a forum over forum.contextualelectronics.com. We'd love to see you over there. Thanks for watching.